Well, you're standing in the town of Fruta. I'm sorry, the town? The town of Fruta, the yeah. The ghost town of Fruta. I don't even see a ghost town. <laughs> like, where is it? Well, you got to look hard. It's okay. here. So there was a town here. And when was this town in existence? Roughly uh, 1910 through 1912, it began its roots homesteaded by Joe Ashley, the father of the notorious bandit John Ashley. John Ashley actually called this home, and this was his base of operation. And they, their home was where? It was right here where you're standing. Like right Josh, here, right yeah, here? This is the Ashley homestead. You're standing on top of it. If Steve is right, this is the location of one of the most dramatic and bloody events in the gang's history. Remember Sheriff Bob Baker, the one who would eventually use John's glass eye as a keychain? Well, having had quite enough of the Ashley gang's exploits, Baker orders a large group of heavily armed deputies to raid the Ashley homestead in the pre-dawn hours of January 9, 1924. a massive shootout ensues. And while John escapes, the sheriff's men burn the Ashley home and their moonshining operation into oblivion. Right here, Josh, that's ceramics from the, um, probably from the Ashley homestead, Some from place? the house. Um, this place was burned to the ground. The dishes inside it, of course, were crushed. Wow. There's archeological evidence that the house existed and was here. Look at that, a dinner plate that might have been in the Ashley home. John Ashley made it eaten off of that plate. <laughs> How crazy is that? This famous raid that went down, it, that was supposed to have taken place near one of the big stills they were moonshining in, right? So in one fell swoop, the idea was to bring enough deputies here. And Josh, they didn't come with warrants. They came here to do business, to take this place out. Fruta is gone. It was destroyed in one night. The main target of the raid was the gang's whiskey stills. Steve and Chessy not only believe they've found that area, they think the Ashley treasure could still be buried there. So let's talk about this, this treasure, right? There are these rumors, these stories that it might have been hidden out near this still site. Do we know where this raid took place, the actual kind of flashpoint out here? Uh, yes, we do. Um, we're lucky to have photographs of where the site was. And I think with 99% certainty, Josh, I can put you on that whiskey still site, which was the whole point of the raid. Can we see it? You ready to go? Please. Now, Josh, I want you to keep an eye out for these cactuses here. Yeah. Also, there's one other thing you gotta keep an eye out for. We got pygmy rattlesnakes. What the hell's a pygmy rattlesnake? It's like a rattlesnake, but small, and it has no rattle. But the rattle's the one <laughs> way you know they're there. Welcome to Florida. This state is crazy. All right, come on. Keeping an ever watchful eye out for non-rattling snakes and whatever other wildlife Florida has in store for us, we finally arrive at a clearing, which Steve believes was at the center of the police raid. So Josh, where we're standing, this was that major still site. The big whiskey still was right here. Right here in front of you. Now there's an old photograph that showed the sheriff's deputies who raided this place in 1924. Yes, I've seen that. They're all lined up, right, in front of a building. Correct, and that building was right there. And was that building the still? It was the still house. It was the operation during Prohibition. They were producing over 100 gallons of whiskey a day. Sorry, 100 gallons of whiskey a day? 100 gallons of whiskey a day. This was a massive operation. This was one of the most productive activities anywhere in the country. So how do we know that still was right here? I'm going to prove that to you. So Josh, I got something I want you to see here. Oh, look at this. What do we got? I believe that's going to be part of the foundation stone for the still that we were talking about. I mean, that is a cut stone for sure. Look at that. It is. What do you got? Got some blue glass. Blue glass? So what's blue glass doing out here? Well, John Ashley's brother, Bill, produced his own brand of moonshine, and he put it in those blue bottles. That's it right there, that, right? That, we got moonshiner's glass and a foundation stone in the middle of nowhere. And we got a lot more over here to show you, too. Wow. All right, well, let's go find it. Everything points to this being the location of the raid. I got a broken whiskey bottle. Look at that, whiskey bottle. If you find a full one, Chessy, let me know. If this is the spot, it makes sense that treasure could be buried here too. 
After all, the gang was making a lot of money here, and most of it has never been found. A lot of people believe that they could have been producing as much as $5,000 a day in revenue. And that's a hell of a lot of money in 1920. Ashley had a penchant for swapping paper money out for gold. He couldn't put his proceeds in the bank. He had to hide it. Yeah. If he's producing $5,000 a day, Josh, we could be talking millions, if not billions of dollars in gold. It's believed that John may have buried boxes of gold coins out here near their base of operations. Our mission, look for the loot, but also see if we can find any remnants of the gang's presence, which would be historic. We point our noses to the ground and slowly start walking the site. Oh, I got metal, Steve. So what do you think? Uh, it could be part of a stove. As we scour the land, I can't help but feel goosebumps at the idea that John Ashley and his gang may have stood in this very place. Hey, guys, I think I got something cool over here. Where? Look at that. Wow. That is too cool. So that is, that's 12 gauge. Look at that. Look, and we got another one. Two of them. Just yeah. literally laying there? Yeah. Josh, this speaks to the violent nature of this story. When Sheriff Baker's men come to the homestead, they're not here to negotiate. They immediately open fire on the gang. In the mayhem, Joe Ashley, John's father, is shot and killed. Having witnessed his father's death, John immediately fires back in retaliation, killing Officer Fred Baker, cousin of Sheriff Baker. John's girlfriend, Laura, is also seriously injured, taking three wounds to the abdomen. John, however, miraculously escapes. And like almost every other part of John Ashley's story, though, they don't kill him. Yeah, he had a, kind of a sixth sense about these things. And while everybody was sleeping, John always seemed to have one eye open. Remember, well, he... that's all he had. <laughs> Sorry, it was right in front of me. It was right in front of me. <laughs> Just the idea that we may be holding the shells that were used to, to kill somebody out here. Absolutely. People you know? died out here. This was here, a yeah. life and death situation. And this was one of the biggest battles in Palm Beach County history. One of the reasons John survived is that he was sleeping in a campsite away from the main whiskey still and the Ashley home. This site must be close by. And there's been a long-standing local rumor that another whiskey still was there as well. We head deeper into the swamp to search, and Chessie almost immediately detects something. Hey guys, I got a good mark over here. Could just be a piece of metal. Let's see if it'll come out here. Ooh, is that it? Mm -hmm. Scrap iron or something? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Just a thin piece of scrap metal. Okay, well. That's a good sign. Soon, even more metal comes out of the ground. There's like a little nail in there. It's got that rounded kind of edge. This was attached to whatever the remainder of that is over there. Yeah. Like edge of a crate, maybe? Something was here. I don't know if it tells us that we're at this campsite, but. It tells you that man, at one point in time, was in fact right here. That's a start. We'll take it. All right, let's keep looking. What might be the edge of a box handle is an intriguing sign. In fact, there are signs everywhere. Ah, uh, hey, Josh, I got something for you. More scrap metal? Well, I don't think so. This looks like an old trap. Oh, my They were word. otter hunters. Careful Gross. that thing's not still loaded. It is definitely a trap. Ah! Um, we can take it Son off. Son of a... Yeah, it's a trap. It's that is a trap. It's an animal trap. And what's cool about it is it's still got the chain stuck to it. Right? I don't want to break it, obviously, but the crazy thing is, look at that. You can it's still, still move and, You yeah. could still actually set this trap. All the pieces of it are here. All the things these guys are known for, the moon shining, the guns, the traps, the boot, like, we're finding all of these things that are so closely associated with these guys, too, right? That's the beauty in archaeology is it allows us to tell their story from what they left behind. Hey guys, I think I got something cool over here. I think 
I found something crazy. What? It's ribbed on the side like a coin, but it's thicker than a coin. Thank you so much. Let's try that. What? Hey, is that a coin? It's a silver dollar. It's actually, it's two oh, silver oh dollars. Those are coins. Jesse, oh my it's God, two it's silver happening. dollars stuck together. Are you kidding Ashley me? Ashley Treasure. There you go, right what? there. Look at that. These are two Peace Liberty dollars, minted between 1921 and 1928, which puts us right on the money for the Ashley gang. Hey, nice job. Thank you, sir.